my entire purpose is for CEOs to have a fresh start. I want you to go into your business feeling like you have the opportunity to be the CEO, be the leader, be the visionary, and for you to have the skill set to create buy-in amongst the people that work for you. So this episode is going to talk about why that matters and why you may have been missing the mark to accomplishing that within your organization. Welcome back to the Higher Great Health Podcast. I'm your host, Cena Martin. So grateful, so thankful to be back here with you for another episode. Uh, this has been a very interesting season in my personal life, and recording these podcast episodes have become like a mode of therapy for me. Um, I have actual therapy, but this has become a therapeutic space for me where I'm able to communicate concepts that have transformed the way that I live, I work, the way that I think. And I'm hoping that you're gaining as much out of this as I gain um, by recording this content. So just wanted to start off by saying that today's episode is all about transforming your employees into role CEOs. This is a topic that every time I go on any stage, whether it's a virtual summit or a virtual conference, or when I take this to um, a speaking engagement and I present this in person in front of an audience, this topic always sparks light bulbs. People love this concept. And so I thought, well, wow, how is it that I've presented this to multiple audiences from here to, you know, um, parts of Africa where I presented this um, in a virtual conference? And I haven't talked about it here on the podcast yet. So if you didn't listen to the prior, the previous episode um, before this, when I talked about productizing your expertise, um, you're going to want to listen to productizing your expertise before you dive into this one or listen to this episode and then go back and catch that one because these, these two concepts go hand in hand. So um, piggybacking off of productizing your expertise, sometimes that is the one, that tactic, like that strategy or that concept that I shared with you in that episode, what I've noticed in our, in my community of clients is that that is the thing that prevents, <clears throat> that could be, that could prevent you from believing that you can actually have this structured business. Sometimes we hear, you know, take your ideas and turn it into into the business. Or um, like I used to, I I used to call it monetizing your magic. Right, that was like a, a course I had back in the day uh, where I would call it monetizing your magic. But essentially, it's taking your expertise and you turn it into products of some sort. And that is what I believe is the first step. And I'm not just going to say believe, but that's what that idea, that concept broken down into action items is the thing that helped me to start freeing myself from the technical trap, trading time for money, um, being a employee in my own business that could never separate from the work and start to experience the peace of running a business that Im- improved my quality of life versus versus diminishing my quality of life. So you hear me say that. And if you listen to that episode, I, I go into great detail about it. But sometimes that's the that's the block where it's like, OK, I hear you say, you know, productize my expertise, Tina, but like, what? how do I do that? What does that actually look like? And then in your mind, if you're used to working and and overworking, and that's how you approach everything in life with this um, runner's mindset, this like hustle culture, then what you hear me say is go do more work. But what I'm actually saying is, no, you need to do less tactical manual work with your bare hands. And I want you to step into envisioning yourself in a different light so that you think differently 
before you decide on the type of work that you're going to do. I'm asking you to become confident in your leadership. I'm asking you to trust your gut. I'm asking you to lead from the front, to lead with focus in an ethical manner so that you believe what you're building and then your team members buy into what you're building because your desire is to have this business that works for you and not you expire working in it. Yeah. So let's kind of like talk about that today. So that's the idea behind transforming your employees into your role CEOs. So what I want to help you do today is to get you to believe in yourself a little bit differently. First things first, whenever I bring clients to this point of my signature program, this this sentence, this conversation always comes up. And I say all, I don't use always a lot, but I'm going to say always because it literally always comes up. That's what I call the validation trap. So the validation trap is, I don't even know how to ask the right questions. I'm not certified, I'm not experienced, you know, I'm not filling the blank to ask the right questions to my team or to my employees or to my VAs. I don't even know what to ask them to do. This question always comes up. So when I say transform your employees into role CEOs, the next thing is, well, I don't know what to ask them to do. I I don't, I don't have any idea. And what you're really saying is you're worried about being an ineffective leader or a mentor. You're worried about being an ineffective leader or a mentor. So I want to help you unpack that and flip that around. It's not that you don't know what to ask them to do. It's that you're so used to simply doing. You're so used to running on the hamster wheel of to-do lists and tasks and project creation and never really reaching your finish line or coming up for air or celebrating your wins or slowing down enough in your mind to say, I do deserve to have a team that can fill the gap for me so that I can focus on leadership work in this business or I do deserve to have free time to spend with my loved ones or my family or my elders or my mom who may not be doing so well right now and she's getting older and I need to go sit with her um, or take that vacation that I've always wanted to take or go on that maternity leave because my husband and I or my spouse and I or my wife and I or my partner and I wanna have this baby. Fill in the blank, right? You're tell you you haven't you haven't arrived to the point where you feel like you deserve it. So because of that, you're finding reasons to fill in that undeservingness with sentences like "I don't know what to ask them to do," "I don't know how to delegate this," "I don't know how." But I'm asking you to back up and just look at yourself in an entirely different light. Because before this team existed, or before this employee, or depending on how big your, your, your organization is, to be quite honest with you, it, it matters. But in the scope of this conversation, it doesn't. Um, before you had this employee or before you had these employees, you made it happen within your business. You got the work done. You sent out the proposals. You closed the clients. You delivered the projects to the clients on time, you got the raving reviews. And prior to that, because I'm in, I'm I'm primarily talking to like my corporate leaders in this, in this episode, you succeeded within your corporate career. You advised the, the board. I mean, you got the raises, you fill in the blank. Like you have a track record of success. So you do know what you're doing. You do know how to ask the right questions. You do know how to perform and how to exceed and how to excel. And you know how to communicate to another person how to do that as well, because you've done that in your corporate career over the last few years or decades. 
So the truth of the matter is you have to get free from the validation trap. That's where we are. That's what we're exploring here. So your desire now, once you see yourself in this new light, is, okay, I see the vision. I see where I want to take this um, business. I can see my exit strategy, right? I know what I want to build. I know what I want to create. I know the impact I want to have in the world. And I know how how I want to exit this. Now, how do I evenly share the responsibility by empowering my employees? My answer to that is teach them to be the CEO of their individual roles. Teach your employees to be the CEO of their individual roles. And the only way you can do that is if you see yourself as a CEO to begin with. You should not be answering questions from clients all day. You should not be the first the, the first point of contact for clients. You should not be front-facing clients all day and every day. And then also having to train your team and talk to your contractors and navigate projects and make sure tasks are being completed properly. That is not how we're structuring this because there's no scalability in that. There's no growth ability in that. That's a recipe for burnout. And before you even get get to scale, before you even get to growth, <laughs> let's be real. Like those that first those first years in business when you're not making anything, there's no revenue coming in, there's no profit to, to pull. Like in the beginning, your structure determines everything. Your structure determines how you're gonna grow how you're going to scale, if you're going to break in the process. The back end is the beginning and the end. Your foundation is what the whole house rests on. If the foundation is broken, I mean, you're waiting for a, a, a disaster to happen. So if you want to evenly share responsibility amongst your employees, if you want to empower them, to be more productive and more effective, if there's a shortage of, you can't see the air quotes I'm making, but <laughs> if there's a shortage of, of reliable people, then why not show them by leading by example first how to be the CEO of their roles by you being the CEO first? Yeah. See, my goal is to help you understand your plans of your product, of your services, of your client experience. My vision as your coach, and I'm your coach if you're listening to this podcast, whether that means right now, whether that means you become a paid client of mine a year from now, six months from now, tomorrow, next week. If you're here and listening, I'm your I'm your coach. And as your process improvement coach, my goal is to understand the vision of your business that goes way beyond the basics of deliverables. We're not just talking about what you're selling. That's so small. That's so minute. It matters, but it's in a smaller context. I want to back up. I want to look at this from a 30,000 foot view first before we get into the nitty gritty of it. And I want to understand, let me put it this way. What I just explained is the reason I help clients break the entire process down to its fundamental level. I make you take your product, your products and your, I'm sorry, your best selling products and services and program deliverables. And I make you break it down to its most fundamental level. Why? Because we want to streamline those deliverables. We want to simplify your sales process. We want to enhance the customer experience. And then we want to make sure that anyone on your team, present or future, 
can see their role and understand their importance. Because it becomes easier to see where your products, your services, and your clients would benefit the most from small additions and small adjustments to the process. The process is, is, is pivotal. The process is what matters. It's your foundation. And do you have business, pro business processes in place that are supporting and enhancing your quality of life? Or are they attacking and diminishing your quality of life? That's the question I'm going to keep asking. So this is why it matters for you to escape the validation trap. This is why I need you to become confident in your leadership. This is why I need you to trust your gut. Everybody is, you know, I'm not going to say everybody, but there's this conversation going on in the coaching space right now where it's like, well, people aren't hiring, you know, they're not just spending their money on coaches. They're not just spend, spending their money for mindset work. They're not just spending their money for empowerment. And if you ask me, people never did that. <laughs> the ones who, the CEOs the, or the business owners, the leaders, the leaders in training who always had a vision to improve the result that they delivered to their clients, never spent money just to be empowered, never spent money. I mean, you could go to a motivational speaking seminar for that. You could go to a Sunday search, a Sunday church service for that. If you just wanted to be inspired and motivated and empowered, of course, people are only paying for deliverables and results. And so what I'm saying is, to bring it back to what we're talking about, what I'm saying is look at your whole process, but start start off by asking yourself, are you even confident in your leadership? Are you even confident in the decisions you're making? If your sales are being affected, if your customers are dwindling off, if the experience you're delivering is not up to par with where you want it to be. Is it because we need to tweak the way you are even you're seeing yourself? So, yes, if this is a process that you know you need to improve in your business, if this is a result that you haven't gotten from the last handful of coaches or the last handful of courses that you've purchased and you know this is what you need. There's links underneath the, this video in the show notes where we can start working together to improve that and to enhance that. Book an eligibility call. Submit your application. And I will um, have one of my team members contact you about next steps to see if I believe that, that my process could be a good fit to help you improve your business. Okay? So I hope this, this makes sense. And I hope this shows you why it matters for you to shine light on your leadership and start to not only transform your employees, but in transform yourself because you need CEOs across your team. You're not the only CEO. Share this with someone who needs it and I will see you for the next episode.